สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today I am making a Thai tea creme brulee. Now a creme brulee may sound like it's a fancy dessert, but it's really one of the easiest desserts you can make at home. Once you know the basic recipe for creme brulee, you can turn it into whatever flavor you want, which is why it was the perfect candidate for being Thaiified into a Thai tea creme brulee. And the flavor happens to work really, really well. It is so good. So let's get started. So I've got one cup of whipping cream in here, but instead of doing all cream, which is what you would do if you were making a traditional creme brulee, I'm going to add some evaporated milk. You know, because when you make a Thai iced tea, evaporated milk is sort of the one of the major components of it. So I want to get that same flavor into that. A little bit of water because the first round I made, I didn't add any water, but because we're adding condensed milk later in a little bit, it just made it way too thick and rich. Bring that to a simmer. Just to get it hot, it doesn't even have to simmer. Just until it starts to to steam and foam a little bit. And a shout out to Rob from Vancouver who came to my book launch and gave me another mini whisk to add to my collection. Thank you, I love it. Okay, so now with steaming, and then I'm gonna add Thai tea leaves. So Thai tea. If you want a ton of information on Thai tea, check out my Thai tea video. But it's basically just black tea with orange food coloring added to it, and also some extracts. Sometimes they add vanilla, sometimes they add other sort of flavoring to it. So that's why it's got a little bit of a different flavor. Mmm, and it'll turn orange, and you start to recognize it immediately as Thai tea. So I'm just gonna let this steep for about five minutes. So I've got here some condensed milk, which again is a flavor that is iconic in Thai iced teas. But I don't want to use all condensed milk because otherwise, as I mentioned earlier, it is just too rich. So we still need to add some sugar, and just give that a mix. And then I'm gonna add my egg yolks. So when I have to separate several yolks. I like to crack them all into a bowl and fish it out with my hands because I find it's actually faster. And you don't risk breaking the yolk and contaminating your whites in case you want to save your whites for something else. Bloop. Okay, and then you want to whisk the yolk into the condensed milk. Just a little pinch of salt. Don't put too much. First time I put too much salt, and it was like, hmm, salty. So we are now going to strain out the leaves. And to strain, you can use a fine mesh strainer. Uh, Cheesecloth, or I am going to use a Thai tea strainer, which is basically just like a sock. Like it's basically um, muslin suspended around a metal ring, and that's what they use traditionally to make Thai tea on the street. So I'm just gonna pour this in. Oops! If you spill, make sure you clean it up right away because the color in the Thai tea is going to stain everything. So be very careful. Don't wear white. And if you're using a cloth strainer of any kind, make sure you really squeeze it out with your hand. Cause see how much tea or liquid is still inside. It's still pretty hot, but I'm okay to touch it. But if it's too hot for you, just let it sit for a little bit before you squeeze. Okay. Now I know you're thinking, but there's still some liquid left in here. That's okay. In this recipe, I actually added a little extra water. Because knowing that the the tea leaves will have absorbed some water that we can't get, so that has been factored in. Ah, spillage. Dangerous. Just gonna pour the tea into the eggs, and then we are really close to being done. Stir that in. Aha! Beautiful. We're gonna strain this one more time because usually there's tiny little bits of eggs, and we want to strain all that out so it's completely smooth. And see in the strainer, you see exactly the things we're trying to catch—just little tiny bits of egg that just won't mix properly. So for this recipe, you're gonna get three standard-sized creme brulee ramekins. Don't use the deep, narrower ramekins. Whenever you make a creme brulee, you want to make it shallow because at the end, we're gonna put a sugar crust on top. And if you use the deep ramekin, then you get not a lot of crust and just a ton of custard, right? So that's why these are made specifically for creme brulee. So the reason. Why these ramekins are sitting in the sheet pan is because we're gonna fill it with hot water. They're gonna bake in a water bath. But before we bake them, see these air bubbles? 
You want to get rid of those. You can just spoon them out. I mean, if you don't really care, you can leave them. It's not the end of the world. But if you have a blowtorch, you can just flash them and you see how the big bubbles just kind of disappear really quickly. The little, little tiny foamy bubbles, I find those are okay. It's just the big ones you don't want to leave in because then they will create a little crater on the surface. So we're going to bake these now at 325 degrees. This is hot tap water, by the way, as hot as you can get it. And you want to pour it just so it's half up the ramekin. Bye-bye. So the creme brulee are going to take anywhere between 35 to 45 minutes. And the way you check creme brulee is you just want to tap the ramekins with something to get them moving. And if it waves like it's liquid, that means it's still not done. What you're looking for is for the mixture to jiggle like jello, but you can tell that it's got a firmness to it. Then they are ready to come out. Oh, and by the way, the little foamy bits, don't worry about that because once we put the sugar on and brulee at the top, you can't see them. And then just place it on a towel for now. Now you want to chill them in the fridge completely. If you serve them when they're warm, it'll actually be too soft because the fat in the milk and the cream and the eggs need to solidify in the fridge. So definitely plan ahead and make these several hours ahead of time. So the creme has chilled and now we're going to brulee it. And by the way, creme brulee in French means burnt cream, even though it's the sugar we're burning, but anyway. So two teaspoons to three teaspoons, which is a tablespoon of sugar. If you like a thick crust, go with a full tablespoon. If you don't like a thick crust, if you like something thinner, two teaspoons is okay for this size ramekin anyway. And then spread it out really evenly. We're going to brulee it using a blowtorch. So this is a blowtorch, a home use one that I got from I think William Sonoma. But if you don't have a blowtorch, you can also broil the creme brulee under a broiler on high. I've never done that personally, but I know it can be done so you can try it out. Let me know how it goes. But otherwise, these are okay. They're a little weak, so it takes a long time to brulee one. If I can go back and buy another one, I'd get one that's a little more industrial, then they really do it quickly. And don't do one spot at a time, sort of go around it and come back a second time to get it really dark. And you want some dark spot. <sighs> okay, so there you are, a creme brulee. Um, you, a little burn spots like that is nice. Okay, so now it is very, very hot. So you have to let it cool. It's just a couple of minutes is fine. Let the sugar solidify before you go and eat it because melted sugar is the hottest stuff ever. So you will burn yourself. So a way you can test to see whether it's ready to go is you can just tap the top. And if it's hard, it's ready to go. The most satisfying bite is the first one when you crack open the sugar. Ooh, yes. Ooh, look how creamy that texture is. Mm. Oh, it's so creamy. And that crunchy sugar. Mm. This is why it's so important. You use a shallow creme brulee dish so you get that crunchy sugar in every bite. Oh, that's so good. And I love that bitterness of the Thai tea. It actually makes the creme brulee easier to eat. Because you know, sometimes the classic vanilla creme brulee is delicious and I love it. But after like five, six bites, sometimes I find it to be a little bit cloying. But that tannin, the bitterness in the tea really allows you to keep going. So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make this, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, please do so right here so you don't miss an episode of awesome recipes like this. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.